Hi there everybody, it's Halsey from slimandstylish.com. Thank you for joining me today. Today I have this gorgeous window card to show you using my new favourite stamp set, which is the All That You Are stamp set. I've had to put a rule in with this stamp set because I have used it so many times since I've got it that I've now had to put it right at the back of my cupboard so that I use something else. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that naughty? But I want to demonstrate other products. But this one I love. I think it's gorgeous. It's great for colouring and it's great for blending. And as that's one of my favourite things to do, I just love it. This is one of the window cards that I've done. I'm going to show you how to make it. I finished off with some of the adhesive back sequins and from the variegated ribbon, which I am in love with. So let me show you how to put it together. It's relatively simple. I used two dies, so this one is from the Layering Circles die, and then I used a slightly bigger die from the stitched framelits, so that my die around the side could have the stitching. So what you need first of all, is you need the circle die, and you want your card base. So what I've done is what I usually do, it's an A4 sheet of paper cut in half and then scored in half so it gives me a tent fold card. I'm not putting a layer on it, there's no layers, this is just flat. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a look at it with my big shot. Let me just drop that in. And I only have one plate on my big shot. I can't only have, there it is. <laughs> it's hiding under my stamparatus. <laughs> so you want to use the circle that's not the stitched bit, just the plain circle die to start off with. I've got a magnetic platform, so this will stick where I put it. But if you haven't, you're free to use washi tape or a post-it note to get this to stick where you want it. And I just want to put it towards the top probably about a centimetre and a half off, and I'm just going to eyeball this and check that that is straight. I'm actually going to put that bit through so that it sits a little bit sturdier rather than flopping. So let's have a look. Is that sort of where I want it? That's about where I want it. So I'm just going to pop the top in and just run that through the die cut machine. Okay, keep the insert, you want the insert. And I'm just going to put the die cut machine to the side, but I'm going to want it back in a minute. So don't put it too far. Okay, now this circle here will fit ideally. Let me just do you get that on your plates when you've done a bit of um a run through the big shot, you get little bits on your cardstock that's a bit mucky. So that will then go as your background. So if you can see I have a background circle right here. So I'm going to put that to the side so that I can do some stamping on it later and I'm just going to decorate the front to start off with. So I'm using the um, old ink colours powder pink. So that's the 2017-2019 colours. I've just got a spare piece of scrap. I bring my big shot back. I perhaps should have done this while it was out. I was going to do the um, inside of the card before the outside, but then I thought, just do all the die cutting in one go. Because it just makes sense, you know? So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to drop that one in. I'm pretty sure that one didn't fit. So that doesn't fit inside the... Um, stitch framelit so you leave the stitch framelit in run it through okay remove the stitch framelit and then when you run it through the next time with the smaller circle this is a circle that you used on the card you want to line that up exactly around the stamp around the die sorry so you haven't got any pink showing so that is going to be the exact spot there you are 
are that gives you a perfect frame where you've got the stitching all the way around. I'm just going to pop that off to the side. That's all the die cutting done. I really should have done it without taking the big shot off. I just, I thought I'd colour first. I get excited because I always want to colour everything in. I'm a, I'm a colour freak. I want to colour everything in. So I'm just going to grab my Tombow. Come on. At some point today, that's going to come out. There we go. I'm just going to run a very small ring around there. I'm just going to give that just a couple of seconds, not long, just so it's not runny runny, it's just tacky. I'm going to do that then around the window just to give it that little bit of a frame. You don't want to push hard otherwise you're going to have the glue squirt out so just leave it to dry on its own accord on the side. And then I'm going to bring in the circle that goes inside the card. Okay. My Stamparatus. I'm using the Stamparatus because I want to get a perfect, perfect stamp on it. I don't want to have any little bits on it. So I'm just gonna pop that on there. I've got some scraps somewhere. Because the stamp is gonna be bigger than the circle, I'm just using some scrap to protect the foam, really. That's all, I don't want um, it to mark. This is a cling stamp set, which means you need to peel it off by putting a nail underneath it to pull it off. If you try and pull it at the top, you will ruin the rubber. I'm just gonna layer that exactly about. I wanna try and get as much of the flower on as I can while still leaving a little bit of white space just at the top. So I'm just going to... about there. Okay. Put that underneath. And memento. don't need to bother going all the way down the stalk because I know that that's not going to be in my circle. Let's stamp that down. And as always with the Stamparatus, if it hasn't stamped perfect, you can just put another little bit on and mine hasn't just at the top here. So I'm just going to do it again. down at the top to make sure that that little daisy goes on like that. Okay, that's all you need your Stamparatus for so you can put that aside. You can use a bigger block like an e-block and do it that way but I just like, in case it doesn't stamp, I want to make sure mine's perfect. So the colours I'm using to watercolour this in is the old olive, rich razzleberry, melon mambo, lemon lime twist, Bermuda Bay, daffodil delight, real red and flirty flamingo. And what I'm going to do is while I colour this up I'm actually going to pop you on, um, on speed so you won't hear anything but at the same time my colouring will be a bit quicker for you. I'm also going to use a blender pen. This one I've newly just popped a little bit of water on the end so it will clean it up really quick. Okay, let's get going.
Okay, that's just finished with the watercolour pencils. And what I'm going to show you now is when you use the blender pen over these. So I've just zoomed you in. So you can use the blender pen. It comes with two tips. And all you do is run over the watercolour pencil. Like that. And it takes it from being a scratchy watercolour blends it all in together so all of your colours go together. Try and keep it in straight motions. Like that. And then what you need to do is when you've got to the end of your one colour, like I've now done, and that bit's all done, just run this a few times on your scrap paper so you get rid of the colour you were using. You don't want to drag it into a different colour. And then, yeah, just go again. And you can see because I've run the old olive over underneath the lemon lime twist, that bright colour is just coming to the foreground as you blend through it, but it's still got the shadow and the blending. And do exactly the same on the leaf. But it's great because you don't have to be neat with the watercolour pencils, just scribble on. And the blender pen hides all that scribble blends all the colours together and does all the hard work for you. So now that I've just done that bit, I'm just going to wipe that off again and go on the yellow bit. With the yellow bit, I'm just going around in a circle because I don't mind if the yellow bit isn't in the lines because to me that just gives it a little bit more pop. I'm just going to get the yellow in there and then just for good measure, I'm going to take it and I'm going to run it all over like that this time to make sure that all the lines are going in the right direction. All I'm going to do now, or all I'm not going to do now, <laughs> I was going to add a bit of Winker Stella, but my Winker Stella pen's gone missing. I didn't add any on this, so let's not do that then. And I'll zoom you back out and show you how to continue making the card, but I was going to put some Winker Stella onto the yellow bits at the top, but let's, let's ignore that. I'm just going to bring this bit back in and what I'm going to do is I'm going to crop a piece of the pink for the inside like that so you have it round. It's up to you how you did it. What I did here was I actually die cut the circle from the pink and then slotted it so that's completely flat. I'm not going to do that this time. I'm actually going to put the pink on and then I'm going to stick the die cut in. Now I'll just get my trimmer. I'm using my stamping trimmer. I've just replaced the blade so I know this is going to be good. It is going inside the cardstock as a matte mount like it would if it was on the outside. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut it down to 10 centimetres because my cardstock base I know is 10.5 centimetres, so I'm doing it at 10, which takes it in half a centimetre. And I also know that my cardstock base is 14.8, so I'm going to go to 14.3 and cut again. And that's going to be the inside of my card. And I'm just going to take some snail and just pop a couple of bits down. I'm actually doing it with fuse because I've still got some fuse left, but Combo would work best, but because I don't want it to, I don't want to sit here and wait for it to dry a bit. I'm gonna just use that. Position that exactly how you want to through the hole. So the best way of doing that is popping some glue on it. I'm going to use Tombow so that I can fiddle around with it if it's not in the right place. Come on. I think I must be getting to the end of my Tombow. So you close it, 
pop it in where you want it. So I think I want it about there. Open it up, stick down. And that to me is the easier way of doing that rather than doing a die cut. I just thought it'd be fancy there and not use as much pink, but really it was quicker. So what I'm going to do now is I want to use the Flowers Bloom All For You sentiment. This stamp set isn't just beautiful because of the gorgeous flower. I mean, the gorgeous flower is obviously beautiful, but this, the sentiments that go with it, I think are lovely. And I've just got a strip of Whisper White here. Um, this strip isn't isn't massive. It's three quarters of an inch. Um, it's just some off cuts that I've got. Flowers bloom all for you. Leave a little gap on each side and stamp that down. Some scissors. Leave the same gap on the other side so that you've got a square. We've got some scrap pink we have. I'm going to just use my fuse. You can use your snail or the Tombow, it's up to you. And I'm just going to create a little mat for that behind it. So all I'm going to do, I'm doing this completely by hand. I'm not cutting anything specific. I'm just, just trimming out, just eyeballing really. You can tell because that's not straight. <laughs> I say I'm going to eyeball, but then when I do and it's not right, I get annoyed with myself. And now I'm just going to bring the ribbon. I haven't actually tied the ribbon around the card. I've just tied a bow. So make a bow. You can do this around your ink block if that's how you prefer. I just... And then just pull it into the position you wanted. I wanted quite a big sort of bow so that it sat on the side like that. And really you should use a glue dot. We all use a glue dot. That's how I did it before. So I'm just going to stick that on the back of the ribbon. And then just stick the ribbon down on the side. You can see where it looks best determining where your picture is. So chop that off. That doesn't really matter because that sits under the sentiment, but I think that's going to be a bit too long for sitting under the sentiment, so I'm just going to trim it again. Like that, so it will sit under there. I'm just going to grab another glue dot. Ideally, I should be using my paper um, piercer for this. But my paper piercer has gone for a walk, so I am using my snips. Just as good, in my opinion. <laughs> Only because I can't find my uh, paper piercer, otherwise I'd be upset. Okay. Flowers broom just for you, and make sure that's in the middle at the bottom. And then all I've got now for embellishments is these beautiful, and I love them, um, adhesive back sequins. They are so much simpler than fiddling around with sequins, getting them the right way up, putting some adhesive underneath them, working out how we want them. Nope, just peel them off, stick them down, and they're on. Nothing else to it. So that is my card using my favorite, favorite set of all, um, all that you are. This set is actually one of the cheaper sets in the catalog. Um, Cause I was, yeah, there we go. Just there, 21 pounds on the front page as well. Um, Cause some of them are sort of, some of the cling stamp sets are 22, 23. Um, but that one, I love it. And it doesn't come with dies, but it's so simple to cut out. I have just done one with this one. And I, where have I got it? Can I show it you quickly? I can't, but I have cut out all the flowers with it and loved it. 
such a good stamp set anyway thank you for joining me today i hope you enjoyed and i'll see you all soon bye